All right, B12. There's a lot of B12 hype, fear, and paranoia floating around. Many people are told they're low in B12, and then they freak out because they're told it could lead to permanent brain damage and all kinds of freaky things. All right, so let me set a few things straight. First of all, anything that scares you like that comes from a society that's fear-based and just loves conspiracies and drama. Secondly, blood tests are a joke. I mean, if you get a blood test and it tells you you're low in B12, it doesn't really mean anything. Serum B12 levels do not reflect true B12 levels, since most B12 in the body is stored in the liver and blood tests do not determine stored B12 levels. Blood tests are often useless and misleading anyway. Like, for example, the thyroid test, the thyroid hormone. You go to the doctor's office, sit there, they take your blood, you're stressed out. Stress raises thyroid hormone levels. The doctor says you're normal. You go home, thyroid levels drop, you're tired. You know, or insulin levels too. In insulin raises when you're stressed. Doctor tells you you got diabetes when you don't. <laughs> it's so misleading. So. I, I personally say forget the blood tests. I mean, you shouldn't be able to tell on your own. Third, B12 is stored in the body for years and years, and the odds are that in that time, you're going to accumulate more B12. Do you even know what B12 is? B12 is simply, basically, bacteria poop. And in the natural world, the one we're supposed to live in, you pull a carrot out of the ground, you brush it off, there's some dirt on it, a few million microorganisms, you eat it, that's B12. Or like a berry bush. You go to a berry bush, you know, there's some dust, some dirt, some microorganisms, B12. But in the modern world, everything is so washed and sterilized so many times, not even counting the pesticides they spray on stuff to, to kill things, uh, you got their dead food. The bread, pasta, cookies, bagels, chocolate, cooked food. Most of the processed dead foods that people eat nowadays are so devoid of living things, of course there's no B12 on it. But that doesn't mean you're not getting B12. Do you actually think in the five to seven years where B12 stays in your body that you're not getting exposed to any bacteria or dirt? Heck, even your own gut bacteria, your probiotics produce some B12. There's bacteria. They say vegetarians and vegans need to supplement B12 because they don't eat meat. That's another joke. 90% of America is meat eaters and 60% of America is deficient in B12. So that means half the meat eaters don't have enough B12. Why? Well, let's look at why meat eaters sometimes have more B12. This isn't rocket science. Meat is rotting flesh. There's a lot of nasty bacteria in meat. The minute anything is killed, plant or animal, it starts to decay. Decaying meat requires more aggressive and dangerous bacteria than plants do. If you lived in nature, only eating plants, you'd be getting enough B12. There's even B12 in my green formula. Seaweed, a great source of B12. Those of you who get my sea moss, you know what I'm talking about. You open that bag and it's like, Woo! Wee! Woo! It's like smelly, it's dirty, it's like that fishy sea smell. Well, when you pull something right out of the ocean, that's, that's what it's like. It's full of B12. Even after washing and soaking it multiple times, there's still some B12 stuck in the tiny pores. There's B12 in nutritional yeast, in kale, you, you know, stuff from the store. It's got some dirt on the back, you know, in the you know, produce, in the grocery. Remember, you also have five pounds of beneficial bacteria in your gut, which also produces some B12. Just feed it, keep it happy. It loves fiber eat fiber and grow your own B12. And then there's fermented and cultured foods, a great source of B12. Every little bit adds up and it stays in your body for years and years. So chances are you're getting enough B12. Now it's possible some of you are actually low in B12. So the real question isn't, where do I get my B12? It's, what's robbing me of my B12 and how do I stop it, right? The answer to all your health issues shouldn't be, what do I take? But, what do I stop doing that's causing the problem in the first place? Otherwise, you're simply just patching holes in a sinking ship. The first place to look is your stomach. B12 is acid dependent for absorption. And that's why older people have B12 issues because not because they don't have enough B12, but because it can't absorb into their body properly because their stomach acid is too low because acid declines with age. And then you add like absorbent foods like bread, bagels, and other wheat products that absorb stomach acid like a sponge. And they also turn into sugar, simple sugars in the body, which feeds candida yeast, H. pylori, which radically depletes stomach acid. Then you add on top of that antacids, baking soda, alkaline water. That all cancels out stomach acid. Most people have low stomach acid as a result from not knowing what and how to eat. Almost everybody, even raw foodists, are sugar addicts and they choose what to eat based on how it tastes, not what it does for them or what they need, really need, resulting in a body that doesn't work right. 
Even orange juice has 22 grams of sugar in it. That's as much as a, as a Coca-Cola. You know, they're sweetener in all restaurant food. They want you to like their food so you'll come back. If it's not white sugar, it's like fruit reduction in some of the fancier places. And in raw food places, it's like orange juice, pineapple juice, agave nectar, honey, corn syrup, maple syrup, cane sugar. You know, most people aren't fruitarian or vegan. They're sugarians. <laughs> Anyway, so if you want B12 to absorb, you need strong stomach acid. And for that, you need to cut down the bread, the sugar, and start adding more bitter things to your diet. You can rebuild stomach acid by using more acids in your diet, like apple cider vinegar and lemon, acid, or lemon juice. Um, and you also need for stomach acid some sea salt, B-complex vitamins, and 50 milligrams of zinc with one of the meals, plus bitter greens like arugula, endives, watercress, and my liver formula helps too. Do not drink alkaline water. That just speeds up the whole mess of weakening stomach acid, nutrient absorption, and it lowers B12. And another thing that lowers stomach acid is adrenal burnout. The biggest factors being stress and stimulants like coffee, energy drinks, sugar, you know, all that stuff you guys do. Stuff like that. You can strengthen your adrenals with adaptogenic herbs like licorice root, ashwagandha, shizandra berry, uh, stragulus, jogulin, nettle leaf, amla berry. You can get all that stuff yourself or just get my adrenal kit. I already put all that stuff together for you. Also, uh, B12 pills, uh, sublingual methylcobalamin is what you want, not the cyanocobalamin. Uh, if, sure, you can pop a B12 pill, but listen to what I'm saying. Simply taking a pill is not going to necessarily make you better if you don't stop doing what's causing the problem in the first place. Stop trying to hide your symptoms and get rid of the cause. That's the only real road to true health. So, watch this video three times, go thumbs up on it, send it to your friends, and start helping to change the world. People, stop looking for something to take to fix a problem or a symptom, and just stop doing what's causing the problem in the first place. You're welcome. Give me some chocolate.